Let's take a look at the clock problem from the homework. The hands of Big Ben creating torques based on what time of the day it is. We've got two hands here of the clock, let's say five o'clock. These hands, for the moment, are not moving. That means they're in equilibrium. That means that the linchpin here is creating an equal torque opposite to that created by the clock hands for a great net torque of zero. Let's model the hands of the clock as two long thin rods pivoted about one end. As you can see, they're not, but it's the closest thing that we have, and it'll give us a good estimation in any case. Let's take the minute hand first, the one on the 12. Torque goes through the center of mass, so mark the center of mass, and from there, draw the force of gravity. Force of gravity goes right through the pivot point, radial distance zero, there is no torque. The pin doesn't need to do anything to the minute hand to keep it from swinging down, it just needs to keep it from falling off. Now, let's take a look at the hour hand. Again, torque goes through the center of mass. Do not forget to mark the center of mass before you do anything else. Got it? Good. There, at the center of mass, at the point where the force is applied, again, draw the vector for the force of gravity, mg. There it is. There's the force that's providing a torque. Next stop, radial distance from the point where the force is applied in towards the pivot point. Draw and mark your radial distance. Check how big is your radial distance. Does it go the whole length of the rod? No, it doesn't. As you can see, if you remember to mark the center of mass first, radial distance for the clock hand problem is half the length of the hand, in this case, the hour hand. Now, torque is force cross R. Cross means multiply the perpendicular bits. One look at the vector confirms these are not perpendicular, so we need theta. Take a look. We have half a clock face. That's 180 degrees. It's divided into six sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. 180 divided by six is 30 degrees. We are 30 degrees short of a full 180. That means we have an angle here of 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6 if we're doing things properly in radian mode. Vector r, cross product vector f, the magnitude of the torque on that hour hand is going to be f r sine theta. We have f mg, we have r 1 half l, we have sine theta sine of 150 degrees. What is the sine of 150 degrees anyway? Plus my soul. It's 0.5, isn't it? It's 1 half. It's one of those nice geometry class angles. Substitute in the sign. Simplify. 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 Press play to check your answer. There we go. Now, speaking of that direction, the torque provided by the hour hand is going clockwise. Well, of course it is. It's a clock. Clockwise is negative. Now, what about the axis of rotation? We've got up here, nice vertical clock hand, so it should be in the y direction, right? Wrong. The axis of rotation, the position of the linchpin, isn't up and down. If you want to pin these hands here, you're going to have to pin them right through the screen. The negative isn't negative y, it's negative z into the screen rather than up and down it. Now, if the hour hand provides a torque of 1 4th mgl in the negative z direction, that means in order to keep our clock in equilibrium, this pin has to be capable of delivering a torque of 1 4th mgl in the positive z direction. Add the two up, and we keep the clock at rest for the hour to chime 5.